everyone, today is a special treat day because we are somewhere I have not brought you before and this is in the second shade house. So I wanted to bring you in and it's April and I just wanted to show you these stunning colours in the second house. Yeah, we've just got quite a few Neurogel and also quite a few Igneous. So where we normally, where I'm normally filming is where we are looking into right now. So we're looking straight into where most of the videos I've made so far have been on the Shade House only being in that sort of section and down the back with the Breezes and Gasmania and so on and the Brom Rack. And that area has the green shade cloth. So where we are at the moment is we're under 50% uh, black shade cloth. So that is a little bit more light. I just wanted to say what a terrific plant Bromeliard are because they grow in such a wide range of light conditions and they're just so versatile. You can grow them in so many different light conditions from shade to 50% shade cloth and so and with different colored shade cloths green shade cloth or black shade cloth and some people use the beige and they can grow on patios and verandas in your garden and also in different kinds of shade houses so this one i've opened up into one big room and when they first come through here to this section i put them on this side of the shade house to begin with and that's because this side of the shade house is shaded at 12 o'clock so every day I'm by the other shade house so for most of the year so for most of the year the green shade house where we're looking into where I'm normally filming uh, it comes over and casts a shadow over just this half of the shade house so the second half of where we are now is not shaded at 12 o'clock. So it's just 50% black all day long. So when I'm transitioning the bromeliad from the greenhouse to the black house, I just bring them into this section where they get shade at uh, lunchtime. And then I can, uh, once they've adjusted to that, I can move them over to full sun or, but it's actually quite full up in that section, which I'll show you because I have quite a lot of plants that are like a fair amount of sun or will tolerate it, such as I keep all my Orlandianas in the full sun part of the black shade house. So if I'm talking about their full, there's a full sun part of the black shade house and then there's a part of the black shade house that is shaded at 12 o'clock. So that gives me two light conditions in the one shade house. And then if you count the green shade house, that's giving me three different light conditions. So that's just to show you, um, you know, how versatile they are. They can grow in all sorts of different shade, uh, conditions. Some like a little bit more than others and so on you can just move them around until they find uh, the right light and most of them do really well in uh, both types of conditions um, you know there's a few few of the igneas that do not didn't do so well when they were in the green side of the shade house such as jc superstar uh, igneal one uh, it went quite a dull grey sort of colour when it was in the green. Lost, lost a lot of its colour and um, it's one of my knockout things. So I keep that in the centre of this shade house. So in the centre of the shade house receives full sun because the cutoff mark of the shade house is only on the other, on this side, on the side towards the greenhouse next to that because the greenhouse is casting a shadow so if you watch my other video where I was talking about the house casting a shadow well I also use my shade house 
that casts a shadow to try to use that to full advantage. So that gives me um, a good area to transition from earlier that might be going into more light as well. So that just um, cool things that you can do and you can just create those sort of things with different things you can have in your uh, garden. So on the full sun side of the black shade house where we are now I have the mesh racks and I have that along the whole side of that and then I also have Amelia down on the ground along the pathway. Um, along the pathways. So, um, and on the right hand side um, I have different kinds of racks where I'll fr refrigerator racks and phone boxes and all sorts of things but a majority of the plants are up on the rack and I keep a lot of my Chantini eyes on the side where there's just a little bit more shade which is some of them and on the left side I keep most of the Igneas that um, take all those full sun so not quite full sun but they do really well on this side and also a lot of neorigelias that also like um, or take quite a lot of sun, like almost full sun but not quite, so 50% black shade cloth. There's a lot of both acneas and neorigelias and a few other different types of um, bromeliad and that's what's in here. So I've come in today and I thought to bring you along to have a look in here while I'm in here because um, I need to cut some pups, so that's why I've come in here to cut some pups to take to a uh, Brom Journey, real holiday slash bromeliad, swap meet, garden, talk and all sorts of things. So I'll be showing you that in one of my upcoming clips. And so I'm just going to cut the bromeliads that we're going to take. So I hope you enjoyed looking around at our genuine first look at my, this part of the shade house, or shade houses. So um, I'll take you back in a minute moment to the other shade house and we'll look back through um, towards here because I need to go in there to get some of the brom tools to remove some pups. So, so here we are back in where I'm normally uh, filming and looking through towards where we were standing not long ago in our last video. If you've ever been on a Brom Swell, maybe you can just take uh, one or two really good plants or you could also take a few marbles or something. Um, you know, maybe three or four marble plants would be nice to swap for something really nice. And sometimes uh, where you're going to, to have your Brum Swap meet, uh, they mightn't have many different choices where they are, so you might find uh, plants are really appreciated. So not just, um, you know, really uh, big ones and so on, but maybe just a few little ones are always good for travelling. So I've had to keep travelling in mind uh, with most of these pups. So. I'm going to do a mix of a larger and also some of the small to medium growing ones like the apricot marble, pink river, you know a few of those beautiful ones and um, so I'm going to get them ready to pack up and where we're, we're going to, I'll give you a clue, we're going to be flying so look out for my next video and don't forget to subscribe and give me the garden screen thumbs up